Welcome to a video tutorial on PVSol Premium, uh, new features of 2017 uh, revision 6. And um, we're going to be looking at uh, a couple of things. First thing is about uh, controlling uh, the viewpoint that you will have if you've imported uh, an image as a floor plan. Um, now, with the R6 version, you will be able to use your right mouse to move the image around. Uh, prior to version 6, you will need to use the keyboards, um, you know, letters A and D, W, S and R and F will do the movement for you. So, um, things will be... Uh, somewhat improved with uh, revision six in this in this uh, matter. So also uh, you'll notice uh, tracing the um, outline of most buildings. You want them to be rectangular, and that's not always uh, easy to do with freehand using a mouse. So there's a facility to uh, right-click um, on the um, polygon you've created and uh, put right angles on all the corners. Well, that, that all the corners that are um, nearly right angles, um, if they're too far out, uh, they won't become right angles. But in this illustration, uh, you can see uh, the vast majority of the corners are, are now right angles. Uh, they've got a little symbol uh, as you zoom in, which shows that. And once those um, you've got sort of a connected uh, points in the building that are right angle. You can use your mouse in the middle of the section and uh, the whole piece moves parallel uh, inwards and outwards and then the dimensions change accordingly. Um, similarly, um, if you want to move the, the corner that's a right angle, this is also now linked to the other nearby right angle corners. If you want to change your mind about any particular corner um, you can right click and edit and uh, uh, untick the the box that says aligning as a right angle. And once you do that uh, that little symbol disappears and you can uh, get, grab hold of that corner with your mouse and make it uh, any uh, angle and uh, associated dimensions uh, as you choose. Double-clicking on that corner, by the way, also brings the same dialog up. Um, you can retick that uh, that box to make them right angles, or uh, you can actually type in the x y coordinates of that corner as well. So, moving on, if you want to uh, extrude. A 3D object now from your floor plan. Um, the question arises at which edge will become um, the sort of reference edge. And you have now the choice to um, select which edge that will be. So once you've got your 3D object extruded and uh, get it in position you need to, uh, you right, uh, right click and edit. And you've got a little drop down box now that says reference edge. And dropping that down, you can uh, choose your edge. And you'll see there's little numbers uh, around the building. Edges corresponds to those numbers. And uh, whatever edge you choose will uh, be the reference to the, the angles that are shown in a dialogue. Uh, in particular, the uh, the sort of pitch of uh, the roof, uh, so that's being illustrated there with edge seven as the as, as the hinge. Uh, so we can change that edge one now, and that uh, changes the tipping point. You can also um, deselect all the edges. So um, yeah, don't forget if it's going to be effectively a low-pitched flat roof. 
uh, that uh, reference edge will become important to what the modules are going to be aligned to later on. And that will be illustrated uh, shortly. Anyway, we're leaving this one with ref uh, edge 10 referenced. So, assuming it's coverable, um, we can activate and um, put some modules on. There, these are pre-prepared, and uh, this this just shows. In this case, they're aligned with that uh, reference edge 10. Anyway, we're going to remove those modules and uh, get into a little more detail of uh, setting out um, edge distances, which was previously only um, possible on the that's the four main parts of the building. But with polygons, you have lots of edges, so now it's possible to um, detail each edge and whatever edge distance you'd like on those edges. You can either keep it as it is, which is a tick box on for all sides, and then you have a, a common um, edge distance for all the edges, or you can uh, uh, deselect that tick box for all sides, and then you can uh, adjust it. You've got preset values as before. Um, with the drop-down box, which has just been shown. So, um, unticking that box and then clicking in a table allows those values, as you see, to be different to each other. Or if you change your mind, quickly tick the box again. Now, restricted distances on superstructures that you add onto the roof can also be adjusted so in this case we're going to click and drag a, a shed onto this uh, roof and uh, we're going to right click on that and that will give us restricted distances which at the moment is tick for all sides and that can be adjusted uh, for, for indeed for all sides or as before we can individually adjust each edge um, if we wish and so modules won't be placed um, in that area. Parapet walls um, proves you had a sort of similar um, restriction with just the sort of the main four sides but now with polygons it's possible to have a parapet wall and um, adjusted uh, adapted to all the roof edges you just need to adjust the width and height of that parapet wall. Uh, clicking OK and there you see it's followed the outline of the uh, the wall. Um, you, if you edit you, it removes it removes that parapet wall and then you can readjust as you need to. So um, to speed things up this video is just going to quickly draw out some barred areas in the middle of the roof which we don't want modules on and also pre-prepared are the um, module fitted on frames uh, or mounted if you like and therefore for the purposes of this video it's quickly c uh, covering all the areas now that uh, we want to on the two sides of the roof and uh, we can now consider the alignment of these modules and uh, because I say we, we, we align them to, to uh, edge 10 before but you can actually select just part of that array now and uh, uh, sort of we're going to nudge them up to another edge. So we're going to consider um, shade frequency uh, with that area that's um, is now on the roof and uh, by examining now the numbers on the modules we can decide uh, which we might want to move in this case we're just choosing 15 percent that's your own choice ultimately but uh, in this case we're going to identify modules that got greater than 15 percent of the uh, shaded and we're going to use this tool now um, to adjust the length of row. So when you select it, all the other features are disabled with the, your mouse and effectively the only tool it becomes is allowing you to uh, click and drag and shift the edges of, of these frames, these, these um, mounted modules, uh, left or right, 
to uh, reduce them or extend them depending on which side you, you've got the mouse upon. So you can tune up your, your widths of your your frame systems very easily now. It was a bit uh, tricky to do that uh, before this version. Um, and as the video has shown, you can even now, you know, as long as that, that icon is selected, you can you can pick individual parts now of the, a larger array and move them left and right. So you can come out of that mode in the normal ways. And now we're going to illustrate the cutting of um, uh, frame systems with that icon with the scissors. And once that's selected, your uh, all other, all other features are disabled with the mouse, and now you just got this uh, pair of scissors, which you uh, can choose which array to uh, cut to 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 separate, as it were. So we're just going to do that on these top three or four, five. Um, uh, sort of uh, frames, and once you've done that, you can um, treat them separately. You can select them separately. In this case, we're going to uh, select them and delete that particular section. Again, tidying up the edge of that uh, frame system. So, thank you for watching. Um, we'll now give you some further information for uh, follow-up uh, with the uh, online forum and uh, possible to download the software and trial it um, if you care to. So, thank you for listening.